everyone. Uh, thank you for being with us today. We thank uh, Sean Slade for being with us for our courageous conversation today. My name is Suzanne Bracci, and I am the um, Citrus Program, uh, the Chief Program Director. And uh, we have Sean Slade with us today. Uh, he is the co-head of education uh, in North America for BTS Spark. Um, he is very involved in focusing on whole child, whole educator, initiative and he's also the co-author of a book flip the system us school climate change so we're so thrilled to have you with us sean my question for you is uh, what character traits do successful leaders need in order to negotiate change especially during these turbulent times yeah, it's a great question to start off with. And it's, you know, we've certainly had some turbulent times the last 18 to 24 months. Um, we talk about the character traits that school leaders need and our work is directly related to school leaders as being um, resilience, empathy, vulnerability. And to be honest, we're talking about character traits or leadership traits that may be a little bit different than what we have um, talked about before or seen before. So not the traditional kind of leader, but a more human uh, kind of leader. We actually put out a, um, a white paper report in 2021 um, where we coined the phrase messy leadership and the word messy actually, or the acronym messy actually spells out certain traits that not only we believe that school leaders need in these times, but we actually found that school leaders who had these traits were more successful. And the messy stands for the M is multiple perspectives. So taking more than one viewpoint or getting other points of view. The E is emotional connection. So it's all about empathy and understanding others. The, the first S is around seizing momentum. So understanding the time that you're in and when you need to act and move. Um, S is sensing the future. So understanding that things are changing and things will not be um, constant, but they will be moving and understanding that there's perhaps multiple futures um, available. And then the Y um actually stands for it's a bit of a cheat it stands for your ego so putting your ego aside and being that more human centric kind mm -hmm. of leader they're the ones who have been um really successful or more successful mm -hmm. over the past 18 months to two years mm -hmm. that's really incredible and it's um this is really great work that you're doing um and the fact that you've gotten this feedback from educators and really looking at what uh, what qualities are really making the most successful leaders. And it's interesting, it's kind of ironic, you know, the, the term messy leadership, but it's really, like you said, about this resilience and empathy and vulnerability and, and being human. Um, what role would you say um, do courageous conversations have in, you know, being an effective leader in these turbulent and changing times? Well, I think it's courageous conversations, I think, are always essential, but I would I would almost make a redefinition of a courageous conversation because it's not the one that perhaps means that you have to be that strong leader that knows the way or follow me in this sort of brave Superman or archetype um, model. It's more being courageous in admitting that you may not have all the answers, mm -hmm. being courageous in opening yourself up to allow others to one, share their vulnerability, but also share their ideas and thoughts. So mm -hmm. um, it's a it's a different kind of courageous conversation. Mm -hmm. It's the one where that one, first of all, you have to have it with yourself. Mm -hmm. you know, and understand your own resilience and your own mm -hmm. confidence, um, understand what your own values are. But then it's that conversation you're having with others, um, which is saying, basically, we are in a brand new situation. We don't have a guidebook. We don't have necessarily a plan that we know is going to work 100 percent. 
I want to hear your ideas. I want to hear your suggestions. I want to hear from the people that maybe we haven't reached out to previously. Mm -hmm. um, so those are the courageous conversations, mm -hmm. the, being courageous in, again, mm -hmm. opening up, um, being humble and mm -hmm. allowing yourself to be vulnerable as well. Mm -hmm. I love that. And what really stands out to me is this idea that it's not so much courage, but it's the humility um, really that that is the important piece of it and getting the perspective of the whole team, you know, not uh, you know, really putting it, putting aside the, uh, the, the motto that I have all the answers and I'm the leader and I'm going to, you know, kind of direct this whole thing, but really leading with humility and, yeah. uh, yeah. And in, and in the defense of people who have been leaders for a long time, that does take courage because if you've been successful mm -hmm. in leading in, let's say, you know, normal times, mm -hmm. um, and being the person that really does understand the school district or the school or the processes or the policies when now ex we've experienced and now we're entering into a period which is going to be a lot more turbulent and uncertain mm -hmm. and messy mm -hmm. so for those mm -hmm. people it, it is courageous for them to to let down their guard mm -hmm. to admit that we don't know and mm -hmm. to really try and rally um, the group and the team but mm -hmm. the evidence is out there that, that when the school leader starts to do that, it actually provides more support and more um, involvement across mm -hmm. the school mm -hmm. team and across mm -hmm. the stakeholders because they're able to step up. If the, mm -hmm. if the school leader always says, follow me, we're going that way, mm -hmm. it doesn't allow any space for anybody else to say there might be a different way. Right. Yeah. And I love this. And this is so much about what our GROW model for continuous school improvement is about really getting feedback from the whole staff, assessing the culture and climate. Um, so this all this all makes great sense with what we're doing. And as you're you know, as you know, you'll, you'll be a partner of ours with with the GROW model and assisting with some of that, you know, leadership training, um, you know, as well, which takes some humility to say, yes, I'm open to you know, getting the help and being the best I can be and continuously learning and growing. And um, so it's all kind of part of that process. So we appreciate you being with us, Sean. It's an honor to have you with us. And uh, we'll be looking forward to many more conversations in the future. So thank you again for being with us. You're welcome. Thank you.